All right, here's uh, what I intend to be a, a short video here. We're going to heliarch um, a little bit of aluminum here, cast, cast aluminum. This is a valve cover, I think off of, um, I think they said it was off of uh, Duramax diesel um, GM pickup. And uh, when they were taking it apart, they said something was on here, uh, perhaps a little, maybe one of these type of bosses or something, and when they went to, to, uh, <clears throat> to remove it, 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 it snapped, it cracked uh, on the thing here. But what makes this interesting, so they want this fixed, they, they swear it's cast aluminum. Now, I don't know how good the camera is, I just want to know what all this this beach sand or whatever it is on here. I, if that's oxidation, my goodness, that's that's just that's just crazy, isn't it? I mean, I mean, look, it's it is truly, you know. I mean, if you look at the rest of it, it is, you know, it it appears to be a cast aluminum. So I just thought I would video this because, like I say, I just for the life of me, I just don't understand all that oxidation on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep it, you know, just grind it like I normally would <clears throat> and uh, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll try to bring you back. Okay, <clears throat> um, so hopefully, I guess you can see that I'm just going to try to just with my normal, uh, you know, aluminum grinder here, I'm just going to grind it off and see what happens. I mean, it looks looks like it's uh, looks like it's okay. Again, I just don't understand what all that all that stuff <laughs> is on there. I don't know. It's like I say, it doesn't look like just ordinary um, uh, what would you say corrosion or whatever. I'm not sure what that's all about and if it's going to affect the weld or I don't know. We'll see. I'll try to bring you back. You know what? Before I do that, I think I'm going to. Uh, just take my uh, my die grinder with my uh, one of my aluminum uh, ball bits and just just try to just kind of clean that dark you know the the casting so that it's it's kind of shiny like it like here I think just gonna do that just just touch it just uh, you know just feather it in just a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> I think uh, I think I feel a little bit better about that. It's you know kind of gives it a little more of a depression, and and I get that that dark gray part of the casting out of there. It's just I don't know. I don't know if that matters or not. Just we'll see. All right, let me get myself uh, set up uh, with my crazy loud TIG cooler, and uh, and we'll see what happens here. Okay, uh, before I start and turn that on, which will turn that thing on, that incredibly loud uh, TIG cooler, uh, I know people always ask me, I, I always forget, but people always ask me uh, what the parameters are when I'm welding something and they want to know, you know, the amps or volts or, you know, depending. So this would be a situation, of course, where uh, we're going to be heliarching. So that will be a CC process. Uh, uh, Constant, um, constant current. Uh, I will be in AC. Uh, in the, I'm, I'll be in the AC mode. Um, I'm going to be uh, in 
probably, I know they want to know, so this would be an, an amperage question. Uh, I'm probably going to be, uh, again, I'm, gonna, I'm going to be in the medium range of my machine, um, which should, should be anywhere from about 30 to, I don't know, 170 amps or 175 amps. And again, that'll vary because I'm using a foot pedal. So, um, so like I said, I'll be in AC, medium range, anywhere, like I say, I, I imagine I'll be right in the middle of that. I'm assuming I'll, you know, probably be somewhere, I don't know, around, uh, I don't know, 80, 90 amps, something like that. Uh, I will be using continuous high frequency. This is a transformed machine. No fancy stuff here. I don't get to select the frequency. I don't get to select any slopes or... This is all transformed. This is, as they would say, old school. So uh, <clears throat> that's it. I will be in continuous high frequency. Uh, like I say, amperage probably going to be somewhere around 80, 80 or so amps. And I'll again, I'll adjust that with the foot pedal. Uh, I'm going to be using just a pure argon shielding gas. Uh, I will be using this incredibly loud TIG cooler. <laughs> um, this is the torch I'm going to be using. Let me bring you here. Um, I am using a gas lens. Uh, uh, I, like, I like the gas lenses. I'm, however, with the gas lens, again, since this is a transformer machine, not an inverter machine, uh, nothing fancy, I like pure tungsten for welding aluminum. So you can see that is a previously used piece of tungsten with the ball end. Uh, like I said, gas lens, number six cup, uh, and again, I prefer the smaller torch whenever possible. This is well within the parameters of the torch. So, oh, and for filler, I'm going to, because again, because I know this is a casting, we know this is an aluminum casting, um, I'm going to be using 4145 filler uh, because that's generally what you use for uh, um, um, castings, aluminum castings. Uh, not that you can't get away with... Um, uh, 40, 40, 43 or, or whatever. You, you probably can. I just, I prefer 41, 45 for aluminum castings. Um, also on this, because of the way we got it set up here, um, I'm going to be running, uh, you know, the way I got it clamped, you know, there's a lot going on here. It's in the vise. The vise is clamped to a piece of metal. This is clamped to that. So I'm a little, you know, my ground might be questionable here. Uh, so what I do is I just put this this ground jumper on again This isn't very heavy, but again, we don't need very because we assume we I just don't I would like to avoid any arcing on where there's going to be a Gasketed ceiling surface. So that's why I'm, I'm going with this little ground jumper. So let me try to set this up uh, You won't be able to hear probably because that thing will be going so um, So I'll, I'll set this up and uh, You know, hopefully you can watch me weld this this I'm right next to the camera here so you can hopefully uh, hear me uh, okay so I, get, I think we got it uh, didn't go too bad it's a little dirty in there you can see some of the some of the sootiness that's that floated up to the top here and I did have to wind up chasing it a little bit in that direction because uh, you know naturally it you know tended to get thin you saw me bevel it with the uh, with the die grinder and stuff but not bad, not bad at all. Uh, I think we got a pretty good repair here for them, and I think they're going to be pretty happy. So um, I think that's going to be it um, on this one. Um, I think that should take care of it for them. So uh, again, uh, let me uh, well let me shut this thing off now that we're done. Okay, that's better. Like I say, I just I just hate that thing. That that God, that thing is just so loud. Uh, in fact, uh, along the lines of that, I don't know if anybody watches, um, uh, there's a fella, I believe it's TJ's 
Nordic, or t perhaps it's TJS Nordic. Uh, he did a he had a similar situation to mine. Uh, I forgot the the style of this this pump, but he did a job recently. Check his channel out. Uh, if anybody's having the same problem, I'm going to probably do it as well, or something along those lines. I've got to. This thing has been driving me crazy for. 15 or 20 years listening to this thing. He, he simply changed this pump out with a different style pump, a uh, different brand, Procon, I think, or something, and that made an incredible difference. Uh, so uh, thanks, TJ. Uh, like I say, you may want to check his channel out. He's got some really cool metalworking stuff, and, um, and, and he mentioned me in that, and I appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, that's something's got to happen there. That thing just, man, just drives me crazy. But anyway, getting back to this, uh, yeah, this is all set now. I think we got a we got got a pretty good repair here, and uh, also if I could mention again these jumper this uh, ju again this is just a jumper, uh, but it really helps uh, when you're not you know if you you know I know it looks like a really thin wire or whatever, but if you're just flowing. If you're not you you know you're not going crazy with the amperage and it's for a short time it's for a short time period you know I mean you're just gonna hit this thing and then you're probably gonna walk away from it you know and clean you know wire brush it and then maybe hit it again to try to float it in you're gonna be fine um, you know you're not gonna flow you know a hundred amps through this thing for you know for five minutes but you know to just hit for small repairs it really helps the arcing you know to the again especially since you know the way you're grounding it is through through like I say a gasket sealing surface that you don't want to mess up so anyway uh, that's just maybe a little tip uh, if you don't already have that uh, or know about that and that's about it so again we got a good repair here on aluminum uh, cast aluminum valve cover uh, and again I'll shoot you the parameters the filler wire was 4145 uh, I think we were probably up around 75, 80 amps, AC, high frequency continuous, because again, transformed machine, not inverted machine. Uh, pure argon gas, and incredibly loud uh, TIG torch cooler with uh, 20 style um, water-cooled torch with uh, gas lens, pure tungsten, 332, number six cup, uh, and oh, and the uh, filler was uh, 1 16th. And that's about it. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. Just a little, uh, little short one here. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. And uh, the phone's ringing, so I gotta go. So don't forget, as some famous guy once said, everybody polka. See you next time.